greetings inspired community welcome to your free card reading on friday and i already know you are not going to want to miss out on today's free card reading on friday because we have one of the most powerful beautiful souls that is joining i'm getting full body chills because it's been a hot second since we've gone live so here we go i'm going to bring up our beautiful beautiful guest let's get into it all right there we go same i've been waiting for this too yes I'm emotionally unstable for this. I'm so happy to see you. Oh my God. Hi, everyone. You look beautiful, Jess. Thank you. So do you. I love you. I know it's like we're not ready because we haven't seen each other and we haven't done this in a long time. And we used to do this way more and we need to get back to that space if it's, you know, obviously aligned. But I, I just, I love you and I'm, I miss you. I miss I you such an overwhelming amount and I just anything that I've ever done that is have has been in collaboration with you has just been absolutely incredible I'm so grateful everyone that's showing up and saying hi and I yeah I'm very excited to hug you in person soon girl yes yes yeah I know I you know you just got back from Spain how how was that how was your trip it was good and it's funny because I think the timing was perfect I feel like right now collectively and also like astrologically coming back into a space of like hibernation and pause illness so I feel like I've been experiencing a lot of movement, which has been great. But now I'm in a space of like, what does it mean to center back in home and like redefine home for myself? So I'm feeling good. <laughs> yeah. You're like, okay, I'm back. I'm here. I'm in it. And, you know, I want to introduce you because I, I have some new people that have maybe not been introduced to you. And I'm just really excited. Um, by the way, check out Jasmine. I'm wearing her color healing tea right now. Somebody already asked me, I already gave them the link. And I, you know, you are just such an amazing soul on so many different levels. And I, I can't wait for you to also maybe share a little bit of selfishly some astrology love. Yes. Because we have Venus in retrograde and Capricorn or what is, I don't even know what's happening. And then we have the full moon in Gemini. And so, uh, so I mean, everybody who's not following, please do yourself a favor, follow <laughs> Jasmine Kylie. I'm going to let her introduce herself this beautiful goddess um but everybody just trust me you are in for such a treat today so oh. go feel free feel free loves i just i you can't be too nice to me because i'll like literally throw up i'm so <laughs> it was jasmine kailene um i'm a certified spiritual counselor i'm a journalist i'm a girl doing her absolute best and yeah i work when within my spiritual counseling um i work with a lot of different healing modalities but the first and main one is astrology so i love to tie together what's going on cosmically and astrologically with how we can work alongside it, how we can evolve and how we can step into a state of self-empowerment. And I mean, whatever tea you want me to share, I will, but I want to write out. Please okay, just that, go. Oh my God. This Venus retrograde, there's no way everyone isn't already feeling it. We're in the shadow period of it because it does go, it goes retrograde, I believe on the 19th, which is the same day as the full moon in Gemini, but just in summation, Venus, which is this planet that rules how love, how we express our sense of self-worth, um, aligning with Pluto, which is a planet that rules our subconscious and like our shit, right? Our, our, our shadow. Um, both of them working together is really calling us to look at like, what is the limiting belief and like the insecurity that is rooted in the way that we are experiencing our relationships, how we are relating to ourselves, what are we communicating to the universe that we deserve and we're allowing and settling for? So... I mean, there's a ton of stuff that goes alongside it, and, you know, we'll get into it as much as you want. But just in general, if you're feeling like right now, yeah, I'm... Just go. Just go. <laughs> yeah, just if you're feeling like you're really being met with your shit right now, it is because you're kind of being asked to look at the root of it, to uproot it, and to really understand how you can reframe and re um, sort of realign the narrative to fit who you've evolved into. So it's a lot. <laughs> Well, and it's so interesting because that's exactly what I feel like I'm going through. To be honest with you, yeah. I, I'm kind of on this journey right now in this space where I feel like a lot of stuff that I had from two years ago is resurfacing and I'm just in it, you know? And I, I'm wondering, I'm, I'm assuming that this probably has a lot to do with what we have experiencing energetic, energetically because it's going deep. It's not oh. like, oh, I'm having a moment. It's like, oh, it's I'm in it. in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a moment. I do, that is, so first of all, because this, this, especially this full moon is kind of like the last on this 
eclipse series and Sagittarius and Gemini, there's going to be a lot of like wounds that we thought we already healed through, like cycles and habits and things that we thought we already have eradicated showing up again. And it's important to note that if that's happening to you, it has nothing to do with like, I'm back at square one or I'm, you know, working through this thing that I already worked through, I failed, but rather you are now being invited to look at the same problem through an evolved lens, right? You've done so much growing from these past few years and it's important to now look back at like, what was this thing that maybe is still playing a role in my subconscious, but now how can I respond to it from a state that is more deeper in my sense of self-worth or I have more boundaries now, so I know how to approach this on an external level. You know, what's being caught up again um, is being called to be looked at through an evolved lens. So like, give yourself the credit for getting this far to be able to look at it again, knowing that you are now a more evolved version of yourself. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, literally, like for me personally, I uh, needed to hear all of that. So I felt like that was directed for me, but I'm sure that obviously everybody here also could perhaps benefit from that. And I think that that's a beautiful space to really kind of start with, because for me, you know, I don't know, obviously, as much about astrology <laughs> as you do, because I'm not an astrologist by any means. But the one thing I will say is that the full moon, the last full moon of the year, it just really means something to my heart. And that's actually where I got my moon tattoo was in 2019 was I got this full moon tattoo, because it really it, it just was my heart space in that time of just being able to really get clear, what is it that I want to let go of, so that I can step into my wholeness, that yeah. much more expansive, like, that's what I think of is like, not just like, oh, we're releasing, we're letting go in this full moon's energy. But what yeah. am I really committed to letting go of so that I can step into the new year in that space of expansion. And I did read just a little bit and I know it's like a, and I want to hear more about this, but it's the full moon in Gemini. And something that really kind of struck out to me was that Mercury obviously yeah. rules Gemini. And so I thought about the throat chakra and yeah. I just really thought about what are we giving permission to, to fully say yes to our lives? Yes. How are we allowing ourselves the space to like, really think about how do I want my voice to really be heard? Mm -hmm. How do I really want to be supported in even in my own thoughts? And that's like the energy that I'm kind of feeling. So feel free to just share some love. Yeah. No, that's a million percent. It. And I think it's so important to note that like the strong, the most, the highest vibration that you can put yourself in is when you say no. And now is the moment we are really being called to say our loudest and most rooted no's to what we've realized and what is so obvious right now is no longer serving us, especially with this Venus retrograde being in the sign of Capricorn. Above all else, Capricorn, and we have a Capricorn queen right here, darling. That's Cap why I'm feeling it. Yeah, they love efficiency. So right now is a moment where if there is nothing in your life or if there's anything in your life that is not feeding you back, it's going to be so obvious. And that goes for not even just the relationships in your lives or, the, or the, the habits and the things, but also just like what ways of thinking, what habitual inner dialogue are you giving yourself that is no longer efficient, that's no longer actually serving you and allowing this last full moon of the year to be um, a moment where you really release it. And I really would invite you to look at what you were rele releasing to be a new form of identity. So rather like, I am no longer going to be smoking versus I am no longer a smoker. Or like, mm. I am feed this, um, you know, limiting relationship versus I am no longer a doormat. Like really aligning your, your identity and the identity that you are evolving into to be shaped by these things that you're really is yeah, I love that. I, I love, I love that. I love that. I know sometimes you're breaking up, I think so, but we got this. I think we got oh, this. Fuck. Yes. You know, you're good. You're good. Um, but yeah, just to like give you like a little bit of love. So that's why I'm like, um, and I want to just give a shout out to everybody here before we get into this, you yes. know, free card reading on Friday, because we have such a beautiful community of amazing artists, creators. We have Gypsy Child Naturals. We have Joelle and Subs, Geraldine. We have Tia. We have Rev J, Missy, Cheller House of Light. We have Jessica, who, oh my God, what is connected? This is I, how I connected with Prominent on Counseling. Amy Heidart, Dari, my mom, Earth Angel Liz, Kangles44, which I love what you were saying, uh, Kristen. We have Jill, we have Carly, and we have Brian. So I just wanted to give everybody a shout out that's here because you are part of this amazing tribe and uh, collective of, of just high vibrational souls. So I feel like can we just dance in conversation of all that is happening? And I have, usually I pick three cards, but um, I figured yeah. that we could just go back and forth. I'll pick one, you go, and we'll just like kind of vibe it out. How's it sound? Perfect, perfect, perfect. And let me know when I can. 
the phone. Yes, let us, I know, let us know, because for me, it's cutting out, but it might not be uh, uh, for anybody out there. Hi there, Chris. We love you. Oh, we love Everybody, you. See oh. the imagery. Uh, um, I mean, we love you. Yes. My mom is saying, hi, beautiful chicas. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, all right. So here we go. I'm, I'm going to start off. I'm going to start us off with the Chakra Insight Oracle deck. Beautiful. So called. Yeah, a little bit, but all good. Okay. We got you. So a little bit, but all good. So everybody just take a nice, deep, collective breath in with me and exhaling that out. And taking one nice, beautiful, deep breath in, bringing in La Luna's energy, letting that go. This potent, beautiful last full moon of this year. So let's get this beautiful guidance with us to just inspire and transform. All right, here we go. Oh, this is going to be powerful. I'm already getting chills like Jasmine. Like what yeah. is going on? We need to do this more often. I miss you. Oh gosh. Are you ready? We're not even ready for the first card. <laughs> we have number 42 insight, understanding, awakening, awareness, self-evaluation. Yeah. You know, and what I'm really getting is that this energy that we're feeling with this full moon on, I think technically, is it tomorrow? Is it tomorrow technically? But I know you're still yeah, slow with it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But I'm sensing that this full moon's energy is going to linger to the winter solstice, which is happening on Tuesday. And so what I'm sensing is I'm going to get a phone call from somebody that literally is watching this live. <laughs> Clearly, I can't yeah. answer. Very cool. So anyways, but um, so, you know, this is the time for us to really go inward. And what exactly what you were saying of like, yeah. what is the insight that you are going to choose to trust in? Yeah. Mm. Because I really get this sense with the third eye chakra. Obviously, you can see it here um, in the card that this is the time for us to not just get insight to be like, I'm getting a download or I'm sensing this, but right. actually say, this is insight that I am going to choose to trust in. Oh. That I'm going to choose to allow myself to fully step in. So if you've been playing it small, if you mm. have been perhaps having your feet in two different places, this yeah. is the card that's really telling you or really inviting you and encouraging you to pick up that neck, that foot that's just in that other place and plant it wherever it is that you truly trust to move forward in next. Oh, a hundred percent. And I also want to say that it's so important to recognize that you are always your own best counsel and you kind of have to step out of alignment to understand what it means to be in alignment. So if you are in any sort of space that feels overwhelming, that feels misaligned, that feels like I'm not where I want to be, it's exactly where you are supposed to be because it's feedback and it's the lesson mm -hmm. within feeling what it's like to be sort of off balance that you recognize like, oh, this is what I need to do. These are the boundaries I need to put in place. These are the things I need to release in order to be in balance. So it's like insight with yourself. It's feedback going within for sure. Ooh. Okay, I'm handing it over to you for the next card. <laughs> yep. Yes, I'm very overwhelmed by that. And it, our cards always just completely, they align so beautifully. I pulled three as well. And the first one, you know what? I'll say the first one is this one. Um, sacrifice is number 12 in this deck. Um, this deck. is the, where is it? The Psychic Tarot deck. It's like Ooh. half Oracle, half Tarot. It's one of my favorites. And the Sacrifice card is one of my favorites because I think sacrifice is kind of like a word that makes us jolt a little bit. But it's understanding that it is sacrificing our old ways of being, sacrificing, if anything, our comfortable choices. And exactly what you said, Jess, um, any form of settling, sacrificing the comfort that comes with settling, sacrificing the comfort that comes with like the yes that is just easier um, to make room and space for what's brave and for what inevitably will build you into this next level of self. We are truly stepping into a brand new era, especially with, you know, this eclipse series that's coming to an end, this winter solstice. It's really like, we are simultaneously ending a story to begin a new one. Re death and rebirth are the same thing. They're synonymous. And so it's understanding that it is sacrificing whatever was comfortable about your old story, your old relationships, your old identity to allow what is new to come in and to allow this new identity to be born. So you got to let go, babe, to have room. You got to let go. You literally are reading everything that I'm feeling right now. Ah! Like, I just want to like let you know that like literally this – feels like it's personal so I'm, I'm i'm i so thank you thank you thank you thank you 
<laughs> All right, the, the next card I'm gonna pull from is my Power Animal Oracle deck. Not my okay. deck, but my deck is gonna be here so soon. We're getting I'm like there. so obsessed with it. Every like, pick the preview that I see of it, it's insane. Yes, I'm so excited and it will be so cool. We're going to get um, a sample of it, like a, like just like our first round tester, um, like next week. And then we're going to tweak it from there. So we're just excited. So I'll, I'll even probably start just using the demo to start to get everybody to just be Wait, can I say it. something too? Yeah. It's so important to note that you have taken such sweet time with it. And that is so important for people to drive a lesson from. I feel like when we want something, we can get so insatiable with it and we can want to rush it. And like things that are worth um, things that are coming from your soul deserve um, the nectar of patience. So like, I'm loving how much time you're taking with this because it's going to show how beautiful and solid it is when it comes out. Thank you for saying that because the whole, the whole journey with creating this with Kelsey, which I know, you know, yeah. um, this beautiful artist and soul, it, it's been like, she's always like, Oh, you know, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm like, no, like it's going to arrive whenever it's meant to arrive. And it's been a really yeah. beautiful lesson of just true collaboration of love mm -hmm of just knowing that the partnership and the pairing that there's, that we're just on the highest timeline. We're not on a rush timeline, totally. you know? Totally. Um, and so I'm excited. Yeah. Woo! All right. So here we go. Here we go. Oh, yes. What animal is resonating with this La Luna? Let's see. Oh my God. Of course. Wait, I'm screaming. What is it? I can't. Uh, duh. Obviously. <laughs> it's giving howling. It's giving howling. I do feel feral right now. Yeah, like literally I've been saying La Luna and like shouting out at her. I'm like so into it. I'm here for it. But um, this is, I mean, and it's so interesting because the next full moon, which is going to be on my birthday, <gasps> we're like a day off and I'm going to just pretend it's on my no, birthday. No, it's so. Yeah, so it's going to be because I'm on the 18th. It's actually the wolf moon, I believe. So, yes. yes. So this is like this, and this is so interesting because what I'm sensing is that the wolf is almost coming around now to really say, what lessons have you learned that you truly are ready to move forward in? Because yeah. the wolf is saying, you've learned this lesson. You are protected in this lesson. It is safe yeah. for you to move forward in it. Yeah. And really the way to do that is by leaning into community, getting mm -hmm. on lives like this, letting yourself yeah. be held, letting yourself be reminded yeah. that you are deserving to not sacrifice, Oof. you know, what it is that you truly want. And so when we step into this next upcoming full moon, the first of the year, let this wolf's energy right now of just declaring, declare today, what lessons have I truly learned that I'm ready to feel safe in? What lessons, what wisdom have I gained so that I can feel protected and really moving forward? That's what's happening is that we oh just need to be reminded that we're safe to move forward. Oh, we're sick. I need to write that down immediately. What lessons am I allowing myself to feel safe in? That's so important too. And also wolves obviously reminded me of, remind me of being like in a wolf pack. And I will say, especially with this Venus retrograde, it's going oh to be very obvious what platonic, romantic, familial and professional relationships are no longer serving you. And it's important to know that you are your company. And if there is anyone around you that is irritating you, that is draining you, A, they are mirroring to you something that you need to look at within yourself, but also B, they're giving you an opportunity to say no, to choose yourself, to invest in yourself, to invest in your energy. And so really take this time to be intentional about weeding out who you are spending your time with, um, who you are allowing into your sacred space, and also just like being okay with cutting off relationships, even if societally they say, but you're married to that person or that person is your family, like allowing yourself to say, I still get to choose myself, um, I would say. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm like, it's, I didn't mean to be this heavy, babe. But listen, no, no, but listen, on. I'm like, I'm just, I'm taking, I'm like, because, yes. How long is this been, how long is this going on for too? Like, this Venus retrograde is literally until like mid-January. So we're in it. Wow. Yeah, okay. Okay. It's so interesting because I know that there was a Venus in retrograde that I was really feeling when I was in uh, the pandemic. And then like now, and yeah, my face is blown. <laughs> like, like what? Mind blown. Um, but you know, this one feels really, really like intense. Like that yeah. one was the last one I remember that felt intense, but like, oh, why totally. does it feel so intense? Just curious. Oh my gosh. I, I think the reason why this intensity is so heightened is because it is conjoined Pluto and Pluto is going to bring up our shit. Like I think if it's, <laughs> If it's like just Venus retrograde, people are like, okay, don't get your hair cut. Like, you know, you're probably going to want to do some aesthetic changes. And that's still true. But with Pluto being in alignment with it, it also has everything to do with like, what is 
um, the limiting belief that is bred from my childhood, from my upbringing, from like my shadow that is playing a role in what I'm allowing. And I also want to say, because yes, I saw a comment about making decisions during retrogrades. And this is so important because retrogrades are not a time of action. They're absolutely a time of review, of um, recalibration, of revisiting. Um, and most of all, sort of like allowing your perspective to be shifted. But it's important to make sure that you're in that period of like looking at it for what it is and you're taking the action and what you are do are looking at rather versus what you are doing is what i meant to say so like Ooh. now isn't the time to do the breakup but rather to take note of like how is this person making me feel do you know what i mean mm. and being honest with yourself about it and then the retrograde ends i believe like january 27th so around there is when you should probably Wow. So, have, have like actually be in the action. So now it's almost like yeah. just reviewing, reflecting, yeah. and then it's like, then going into action. Plus, are we all, ex I'm so tired. Is not everyone like exhausted? <laughs> How could you I'm even so take tired. action now? I can't. I'm so tired. Oh, <laughs> Chloe. Chloe. Oh, Chloe. Oh, I know. I was like, yay. Um, you know, everybody's saying, ouch. Like, this is like, damn Pluto. <laughs> everybody's like saying like it is. You know, can we talk about Pluto? What's, what, what's no. going on with Pluto? <laughs> So Pluto, <laughs> no, because genuinely Pluto is like dragging my ass. So Pluto is finally out of retrograde, but it is conjoining this um, Venus retrograde. So Pluto is a planet, like I said, it rules our subconscious. And truly what we experience in our physical reality is very, very, very little derivative of our conscious state. Everything is bred from our subconscious. It's what we believe about ourselves. It's what we're telling ourselves. And it's what um, the belief system that we have is. And of course, once we know that we can take the steps towards like reprogramming our subconscious, right? And meditating on affirmations and, you know, doing Reiki and doing really beautiful things. But um, Pluto is really, whenever we have action like this from Pluto, it's really, it's the most cathartic um, sort of like death of self, death of who we believed ourselves to be, who we have attached ourselves to being and the ways in which we used to think so that we can align with who we want to be. Um, and how we want to think. So it's a really important and necessary death. It is like the force that will bring about change when we are reluctant to invite it in ourselves. And so it's an important energy to work with, but it's intense. So I do want to say with, with transit like this, make sure you're resting, you're hibernating, you're just drinking water, you're vibing. You're not saying yes to too much. Yeah. Oof. I mean, and I got a call again because I, I guess apparently people are like, let's just chime in on this. But <laughs> no um, so I apologize if it, if it. But I, I love because something that you've said that has always stuck with me is that the planets are always working for you, right? Oh. And I love that that share because I felt like what was so potent about that is that I think if you just have the context and if you have the information so thank you so much for yeah. joining this I literally was like do you want to do free card reading Friday with me like I Three literally asked you ago. today no, and like, you were no. available so it was totally meant to be but I say that because it's like you know I felt like this conversation needed to happen like of yes. just so because now we can all take notes and and really then be able to work with this. Um, Cheller House of Light, who's an amazing soul, please follow Cheller House of Light. I love how we talk about the planets like they are characters on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Oh my God, we have to talk about what Pluto did. <laughs> I, first of all, I'm such a Housewives of Beverly Thank Hills you. fan. And Jess knows this because we talk about it like so often. So thank you for saying that. Yes. Um, <laughs> Pluto is not that girl. She's definitely the Brandy Glanville. And so, oh, yeah, I'm exhausted. It's so funny because you brought up, and this Brandy aligns Glanville. with the next card that came up, which is um, a, a large, large, large belief that I've centered my life in is that the planets are always working for you and never against you. And, like, the second card that I, came, that I got um, is spiritual strength. And so I want to talk about it because I think our spiritual strength is largely derivative of our belief and our belief systems. And it's important to know that we are nothing but our beliefs. And so I think alongside every emotion, every cathartic experience that you are probably going through right now, it's so important to root yourself on what your spiritual beliefs are. If you think that the planet and the universe is always working for you, if you think I am in the highest possible timeline and every no is a reroute and every no is a bullet dodged, like whatever you, it is that you want to root your beliefs in, um, coming back to that is how you strengthen your spirituality. It's how you strengthen your vibration. And it's ultimately, I think, how we're going to get through this kind of tumultuous season. Honestly, eclipse seasons are not for the week. And no. Um, we no. never leave an eclipse season the same, but it's because it's happening for us. So if you root yourself in what you believe faith is and hope is, 
um, it'll carry you through it for sure. Ooh, I love this. Uh, Missy saying Pluto is not invited on the girl on the group. <laughs> <laughs> Period. And then and then um, Carly uh, Blair wants to know. So your birth chart is all about the planets. Um, is already your blueprint? I I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure what that means, but I will say yeah. That, yeah. So you're I it's probably just like worded a little bit. But if you want to, yeah, me, totally do. But I will say that yeah, your your birth chart is kind of like the planetary blueprint of how you experience this life, your emotional strengths, your emotional weaknesses, and ultimately just kind of like a map on how you can be in the highest state of empowerment. Which is why I do readings because it's not about like. Oh, I'm a Scorpio moon. So like, I'm gonna be like envious and like, it's not, it's just, it, it's not gonna enable you, but rather um, sort of direct you on how you can be the best version of yourself, for sure. Yes, I know. And everybody, please, if you want to connect with Jasmine, she does do amazing astrology oh. readings. I actually have had one from her last year. I'm ready for another one. So please, please, please follow this beautiful soul and connect with all of your amazing offerings. And I'm going to pull, um, and yes. recording on Friday is like never about the cards. I figured out now, like literally, it's just <laughs> no, like, please. They, like it's literally, it's like literally just expanded into conversation and introducing yeah. and just being in this beautiful space together, this inspired community. So like, just know that like, this is all so welcome. Um, cool. Before I do this, so yeah, let's feel free if anybody has any questions, if that's okay for you. Yes. Um, what does it mean? I know sometimes, can you see the comments? Sometimes when you're on the other side, you can't. So I don't know why I, I can read I, it for Yes, you. hold on. It just, I'm not, let, it's not letting me scroll. So tell me. I got it. I got okay. it. What does it mean? What does it mean? Saturn retreat out? Something like that. So oh, maybe a Saturn return is that what? Yes, mean? maybe a Saturn, Saturn return. Is, Saturn is a very slow moving planet, and so it'll sort of return to where it was when you were born um, every twenty seven to thirty years. So from age twenty seven to thirty, you are experiencing your Saturn return. Um, it'll happen again in your late fifties, but it's sort of like I mean, Saturn is a planet um, which is doing a lot in the sky right now as well. But it's a planet that rules. Um, our limitations it rules um karma and ultimately it's just like it saturn is i always say it's like that stepdad that like loves you but loves you through tough love like it'll kind of make you experience your lessons whereas like mm. jupiter will kind of like gently teach them to you so anytime you experience a saturn return you're essentially sort of like in this cathartic moment of like how am i what is standing in my own way i think that's the most important lesson to learn and i think um that's also kind of what Pluto is teaching us a little bit. Like, what have you chosen to believe about your worth, about the conditioning surrounding your worth, um, about what it is that you deserve in this lifetime? What have you learned about that that has bled into what you are experiencing? And I'm looking at that so microscopically right now because I'm like, I complain about like my relationship dynamics, but I also realize like I allow this, I choose this, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, mm -hmm. I'm allowing myself to you know, perform for, um, you know, validation or whatever the case may be. So it's important to now look inward and say, how am I standing in my own way of being my most evolved self? For sure. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we have so many people that are just saying, thank you. Yeah. That, and <laughs> Jill said that explains a shit, shit ton, shit load. Uh, hi, Karen, by Shannon. And then we have, uh, cause Rev J and also Missy are 56 and 54. So they, you know, and, and Missy saying yeah. that she have the Jupiter return. If he's nicer. <laughs> yes. Oh, we love a Jupiter. Oh my God, honey. Bask. I had that. Yeah. Oh my God. Yo, honey. Your time. Are you kidding? Enjoy that. Enjoy that. Yeah, where are you Travel. at? Because like, I'm like, I'm going to be 36 this year. So I like, what, 30 to 40 is like, where am I at? What return am I in? Or what am I doing? I, I would have to look into it. Because okay. like, every planet moves at a different speed. So I'm not exactly sure okay. what age. But I do know that like, Jupiter right now is in the sign of, I think it moved back into Aquarius, so it's in Capricorn. But um, it just anytime you're experiencing a Jupiter return, it's just like things are easier. And just like let them be a little <laughs> bit. Even if other things in your, in your chart are like a little bit messy, um, Jupiter will kind of eat it. So like travel right now. Have the time of your life, honey. Yes. Yes. I love it. Earth Angel Liz, who's an amazing hair, saying that my hair is giving her parrot energy today, which I think is so great because the parrot is all about what are you sharing to yes. have shared back with you. Um, how do we contact you? Rev J was saying we can definitely um, leave Jazz's information. Follow her here oh, on Instagram. So you can definitely direct message you. But um, how else can people reach out to you? <laughs> I can genuinely speak. You guys are so <laughs> sweet. So um, yeah, on my Instagram, in my bio, I have a little like scheduling tool. If you want to message me, if you have any questions, darling, I'm just so grateful to be here. So thank you for even more. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that this is just such an important conversation because it's like this yeah. last full moon. And I'll, I'm going to go into the last card and then I love if you yeah. could just 
perhaps like once you share the last card, maybe just do like yeah. even a beautiful, like we'll do a recap, but maybe you can okay. give us like, just like some like really good things to like really like think about for like yeah. just making it so potent for this oh. last full moon. Yeah. I have a lot of Capricorn in my chart. Same. Well, um, Oof. and I'm a Leo. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you're feeling. Oh my God, I have. Okay, yeah, you're feeling this because fixed signs are really getting hit because of this. Um, there's a Taurus Scorpio eclipse that's kind of taking part. Just know that who what eclipse? What's happening? Yeah. I have an eclipse moon. Sh I mean, a Taurus moon. Shit. Wait. So wait. There's there's more shit happening. Wait. <laughs> Go, wait. No, I'm like I'm no the cards. I'm just listening. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm so. First of all, I'm just. I'm sorry. There's just. <laughs> There's so much going on astrologically, and and it's not always like this. So I want everyone to understand that, like, very like, we're, like it's just it's not always this chaotic. But I think I get excited because I'm like, this amount of astrological energy means we're at a point where we can really choose which way we go on this fork of the road. And it's like, do you remain in a state of settlement? Do you remain in a state of playing it safe? Of um, just thinking that your dreams are too large for this reality and kind of just staying where it's comfortable? Or do you choose to be brave? Do you choose to release what is painful, but ultimately necessary for your growth? And so it's happening and it's hitting us in so many different ways. But eclipses are so, 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 so like difficult to predict. But the Sagittarius Gemini eclipse story is ending right now. And oh, so it's, it's resurfaced. I know. Thank God, honey. It's resurfacing <laughs> a lot of themes that have happened in our lives um 2012 to 2014 so like if any thing or emotion or lesson that you were learning then is kind of like resurfacing right now it's meant to be looked at um through once again an evolved lens who you are now um and and seeing how this evolved version of yourself is going to respond but now we're starting a new eclipse series in taurus and scorpio so just yeah if you have leo aquarius taurus or scorpio placements you're really feeling it um just know what does this mean yeah. shit when does it start it's a oh, honey like this so the tour the Sagittarius Gemini one is kind of ending now and then the Taurus Scorpio one is going to play out through January but just ultimately what it means is that who you will be in the next 18 months at the end of these next 18 months will be viscerally different from who you are now and if you are uncomfortable with change get comfortable <laughs> really it's, all like, <laughs> it's happening for you it's happening for you <laughs> everybody's like what do i do um <laughs> i can't see the comments so if everyone's like panicking i'm literally so sorry <laughs> so what are some things to just do just know that like we're gonna be okay at the end of this we're gonna be transformed yes oh my god just i think <laughs> it's important to know that like every heavy emotion every like redirection everything that feels like a lot is happening for you um eclipses have a way of gently telling you what to remove and then if you don't do it yourself the universe will kind of step in um so you do have the chance to say okay i know this isn't serving me i know that um this is a habit or an addiction i want to break this is a new habit mm. that start this is um a dream of mine a project of mine that i've been too scared whatever it is that you've just been negating to play it safe or to feed a fear to feed a ego if anything is kind of getting highlighted to say are you still going to remain in this like lower timeline in this less evolved version of yourself or are you ready to actually like believe in your worth i think worth is like the key word here especially because it's taurus and scorpio and taurus has everything to do with values and worth and scorpio is um it just i think if anything it's the most like inherently um like confident and worthy sign so yeah just are you living a life that aligns with your belief and your sense of self-worth Oof. Yeah. And the answer to me for me is not even like, it's not even a yes to that. Like I got to definitely unpack that because oh, same, that is, same. Oh, Oh, like literally like that, like was like a theme that like got like brought to the surface in October for me that I'm like, Oh my God. And when you get it, when you get it in a most loving, beautiful way, yes. but from your mentor, <laughs> like, and okay. the way that they just see you. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And then coming back from that and just saying, Oh my God, like, wow. Yeah. Like literally, like it was so, I just will tell you this really quick. I had, the, and it's not a, it's not a bragging moment, I promise. But like, I, I say this with a lot of love because so basically I was asked to be a guest teacher for David G's meditation teacher training. Yeah. When I went out to California, he's like, do you know who the other teachers were? And I was like, no. And he's like, Mike Dooley, Terry Cole. It was like his event. And then, and like me, like, and I'm like, what? Like, we're talking like New York Times bestselling author. Yeah. We're talking about people who were interviewed on yeah. the docuseries Goop. Yeah. I'm like, what? Like, I literally was like, thank God you did not tell me this 
before, you know, and also one of the students was India Irie. Okay. So like, so for, right. Mm -hmm. And so, but like, there was this, a moment where it was like, he's like, you are ready. I see you in this arena. You just need to see yourself there. Yes. And I was like, I was like, like, whoa, like that was just like, and it was, it was a really eye opening moment of like, why don't I see myself there? Yes. You know? And it's like, and it's not just like, oh, why don't I see myself there? But really, why don't I? Like getting like seriously, like emotional about it. Like, why don't I? And like, so <laughs> almost, it's like the most humbling yet liberating moment when you realize that the only thing that is standing in the way of your most fullest embodiment of potential is you and the belief that you have in yourself. And so when you find yourself thinking, I don't belong in that lineup or those relationships couldn't happen for me or that's the kind of house I couldn't afford. If, if you see anything that is out of reach relative to your sense of self-worth right now, especially Venus working with Pluto is saying, what happened? Who told you? Where did you learn that you are not innately worthy? That <laughs> there's nothing you need to perform or do or accomplish in order to be worthy of a relationship, a career accomplishment, money, right? Like, where did you learn that? And so now it's going to be a little bit painful because we're going to have to look at like, was it a childhood experience? Was it the media? Was it a, a, an experience of rejection? Is it oh, we lost you. We lost your voice. We lost your voice. I, my app left like, timed out. There we go. Yes. Just yeah. What experience, what mindset, what belief was planted in my experience that led me to believe I am not worthy because I am and because I am here. And once you do that, and once you uproot that, you shift your vibration because how other people experience you is directly derivative of how you think of yourself and how you experience yourself. So once you believe in yourself in a powerful way, the world will respond. So that's when you really start to see shifts in your reality. So like, this is a, a, a difficult but important moment to step into mm -hmm. just, yeah, a new era mm -hmm. of self, truly. Well, you know, and that's, I love that you're saying this because like, this is such an important conversation because you're asking the question that I think brings people to the starting point to yeah. working through that, you yes. know? And I think yes. that if it was super easy to love ourselves and to value ourselves, then we would all be just doing it. And we wouldn't be even caring about the eclipses or what this or oh. what that, because, you know, and it's like, but, it's, it's just a return of really asking yourself those questions. Yeah. Oh, and it's so, I think it, it tastes so much better when you're in a state of empowerment, when you know what it was like to be disempowered. And I think we connect to each other deeply when we've been in our shadows. And it's not about getting rid of those, like, you know, darker parts of us, but rather integrating them, understanding them, um, making our wounds and our scars our superpowers, right? So I think it's important to know that, like, if you work for your self-worth, it's much more sustainable, right? As far as like, it's different from like, oh, I just had like an ego trip and I'm like, you know, this is a good feeling for two weeks versus like, I have really dug through and worked through my limiting beliefs, what's disconnected me from my just like innate sense of power. And now I'm standing it more boldly. Also, I see the comments again. Thank you. Yes. So Someone said know. workshop sent me the world. We, we awesome. totally, we, to we, listen, Jasmine and I have been wanting to do a workshop for like over a year. But you know what? What did we say earlier? Divine timing. Divine yes. Timing. So now we, we, yes. we're in it. We just know, you know, and empowered Period. to become our fullest. You know, the, the one yes. thing that I'm really going through right now, and I'm just going to be open and share because it's Please. to everything that you're just saying Please. is that, you know, is that I am realizing that the last 35 years, I don't really know if I truly loved myself the way yeah. that I really want to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that takes a lot to even mm -hmm. just admit, you know, to really oh. say like, wow, because here I am, you know, really empowering others to love themselves, but I really need to do that on a deeper level for me. Oh, yeah. Awesome. And, and so like, I've just been saying for probably like the last month or so, like that all I want to do is really learn how to love myself yes. that much more. And I'm trying to just um, every day stick with that intention and then follow the actions that align to that space. That's and so it. it's like, That's and it's it. been really interesting. I mean, even like, it sounds silly, but like, even like I literally make it a priority to like, make sure to take care of my physical health and like go yeah. outside and like walk, like things that yes. like seem so, but like that they're really acts of uh, acts of love for myself acts of love for myself take yeah. notes from us because we love you i was gonna say i just look at you and i see such an embodiment of love but i think it's thank you it's so important thank to you. recognize when we are loving ourselves on a surface level versus like when it goes deep within and i i feel like if anything to work with this weather 
Venus in Capricorn is really going to show us in what ways am I not loving myself that has been in reflection of how I'm allowing other people to treat me or what like what dynamics am I allowing to continue on and I had a very 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 similar like aha moment that I'm still working through of like I think on the surface level I love myself but I'm allowing so many of my relationships to be so conditional to be such a forfeit of my energy um I'm always making sure everyone else is accommodated and I'm keeping myself last and I realize that's not a reflection of, of self-love and so if you say you love yourself it's important to look at the dynamics you're allowing and you're feeding and the actions that you're taking just like you've said and making sure they align so I think what you said is exactly what we're being called to look at right now for sure and, and I think it's small I think it's not overwhelming ourselves and like no. just like oh I'm gonna just like it's you know small. that's what I would do that's what I would do in the past is just be like okay and then just like go and do the thing and it's like no 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 no. it's actually it's small. figuring it out and I there's so many um amazing beautiful souls and there's one soul that I'm connected with her name is Kylin Light she's fantastic mm -hmm. please follow her but she mm -hmm. talks about this highest timeline and yeah. I love that concept because it's yeah. so it's so important that we are on the highest timeline versus yes. the forced timeline, the rush timeline, Oof. or even somebody else's timeline, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. And how we really? travel timelines is what we where we align our vibration. And it's like you said, the simple actions and loving ourselves, that comes in the smallest no that means so much. It comes in those walks. It comes in those small habitual changes, making sure that your mornings are for yourself. It's in the very, very, very small things that build up. I'm reading this book, Atomic Habits. I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but it's basically just like how the small decisions we make on a day-to-day -day build our very large lives. And so, yeah, it's just shifting a little thing. So don't get overwhelmed with like, oh, I want to evolve, but like, you know. And it's also like, think about how this works too. What about this question? What if every action that you took, big or small, helped to benefit the collective, right? Oof. And when you think about it from that context, there would be so many different actions that you perhaps wouldn't necessarily take because they don't serve not only just yourself, but all those around you. Oh my God, a hundred percent. And it's, it's thinking collectively, which is, I mean, I hate to get back to the cards, darling, but I know. <laughs> You on three card reading Friday, yeah. but I will say that the last card I pulled was Heart Chakra, and oof, I'm really resonating with that because I have really been in a space where I am reviewing every decision and every plan that I have for my life and recognizing which ones are bred from what my ego desires versus what my heart desires. Mm. And like recently, I don't even know if you guys know this, but like my Instagram deleted, like the app itself took off my Instagram. Oh my God, that makes so much sense because I was trying to send you something and it wouldn't send and I couldn't find you. Did this just happen like not too long ago? Honey, like two weeks ago. Yes. Oh my God. That, oh, yes. now it makes sense. I was like, what happened? Did Jasmine go offline? Oh my God. <laughs> I know. I've talked about this so much because it was such a thing. But like it, because with this card coming up, heart led, it has everything to do with like what parts of your life are being led by what your inner child desires, what your true soul desires versus like what fear is saying that you need, what like everyone around you, the story that everyone else is telling them about your, of you that you want to like feed. And ultimately just like, what is ego saying that you desire? What is greed saying that you desire? And so um, with losing my Instagram, I really re recognized how large I wanted to build a platform, of course, for the collective and for this like larger message, but ultimately because I wanted validation. I wanted a certain number of, of followers or a certain amount of feedback to tell me that, oh, like you're doing it correctly. And so it's so important to disconnect yourself from what your brain and your ego is telling you um, is abundance and like what your soul actually defines it as. So I think heart chakra, especially when we like deconstruct all these limiting beliefs surrounding our sense of self-worth, it's important to rebuild them in alignment with like what is my soul's truth versus like what is society saying it expects of me for sure mm, well yes because yeah. i mean it's so interesting that you pulled can you just show the heart chakra again yes. hard? yeah so because i love this because what i actually i just did a crystal for yeah. a crystal forecast for 2022 yeah and i did it with the different chakras i'm going to do like a little one minute video but what i got yeah. here is um, was the heart chakra, the, the crystal to work with next year within the, the heart chakra is malachite because malachite helps mm -hmm. us to set, to say no. Yes. And, and right. And so uh. like, there's this whole sense of, I think that we, uh, as a collective in 2020, obviously experienced physical boundaries. Then we came into 2021 yeah. navigating through those physical boundaries. But I think what yeah. happened is it opened up the collective to say, what about my energetic boundaries? 
Ooh, what about I'm my done. right no. right exactly <laughs> so that's where like that's where like you're seeing like and, and honestly the one of the teachers that I was you know a part of for the David G experience um, yeah. she wrote a book called Boundary Boss it's by Terry Cole and it was yeah. New York Times bestseller because there is a there is something happening in the collective where we've almost been physically seeing what boundaries do and now yeah. we're like wait a second I might actually like to explore what energetic boundaries look like. Yes. And so when you're pulling the heart chakra card, I can't think but this last full moon. And it's like, this is our time to really get clear because I always used to pride myself of being a loving person. I was like, oh my God, I'm so heart centered. I'm so focused. And then it wasn't until I had this like aha moment in a workshop that I was doing with David G that I was like, oh my God, I am literally people pleasing. Yes. And I am yes. literally not having any boundaries in my heart. So as much as it's such a beautiful thing to care about people oh, so totally. deeply, if I'm not setting a boundary there, how, where can that care just can't continue to overflow? Oh, honey, we societally define being people pleasing as like being just like generous and open-hearted person. And then we also define having boundaries as being selfish. And I think that that's just the most like limiting way of living. And I think it's so, so, so important and a radical act of self-love to build boundaries um, between you versus honestly yourself too. Like, when do I know that I'm depleting myself and I'm still pushing myself? How can I build a boundary with myself? And ultimately um, allowing yourself to teach people how to treat you and to show the universe that you value yourself by having boundaries so that the universe can gift you with more to have, right? Because you're sort of communicating like, I'm in a state of self abundance. And, and I saw, a comment about like external versus internal. I want to say that is such a large theme as, as well right now, especially relative to this Venus retrograde, because it has everything to do, like I said, a million times, honey, with self worth. But ultimately, it's recognizing in what ways have you been defining your self worth? Like, if you are getting validation from a person or from a job or from a number, um, do you let that be the exhale that says, okay, I'm worthy, okay, I'm valuable, I can go another day? you know, being a worthy human being deserving of like natural resources? Or can you allow your sense of self worth to be self derived and innate and allow that feedback to come from you and only you? So it's a really large mindset shift that comes in very, very, very small actions. Like I said, it's, it's in the simple no that will make such a radical shift in how the world experiences you and how you experience the world. But it's so important. It really is. Well, I mean, honestly, yeah. because this is still free card reading on Friday, which like we're still here for it because the cards are just confirming this conversation. Please. Are you ready for this? Because it literally Please. is everything you're saying in a card, which everybody knows. I love this deck. I kept, you know, and I want to say something because I love this deck because it's simple. It's to the point. And sometimes life is hard and I just want to pull a card that sums <laughs> it up. And that's something that Kelsey and I even said for our deck. Like we didn't really keep it overcomplicated. Right. We kept it really simple because we were like, our intention is that we actually really want this card deck to reach the masses, not just because of the abundance, but because we really want to bring these animals into life with the chakras, but we want it to be accessible and simple, you know, like of just like, you can, you can pick it up and you can figure it out. And we don't want to press too much on anybody else's intuition. We want them to be able to vibe with it in their own way. Mm -hmm. So what I have here is though, everything you're saying, the love within me is more powerful than doubt or fear. The love within me is more powerful than doubt or fear. I mean, mic drop moment, because everything that you're saying, if you are truly responding from a place of love, or if you are responding from a place of fear, they won't like me. Oh my God. Or right. I won't be able to, you know, um, or I'm responding to this because if I, if I don't make that money, it won't be good. And I'm overworking and what, whatever it is, right? Like yeah. whatever it is, are you responding from the love that you have within yourself or are you yes. responding from, from fear, from fear, from just fear in, 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 in its entirety. And also doubt. I love the card says yeah, so. doubt because sometimes it's not that we necessarily are fearful, but we're doubtful. We're just not sure. Yeah. We're yeah. not hesitant. And that energy of doubt really speaks to our sacral chakra of just, that's our area where we get to transform. Mm -hmm. So when you're in hesitation, you are not allowing yourself the space to fully tap in and own your authority. Right. Ooh. And so Ooh. that's where we get to, we get to love ourselves so that we're making the most aligned choices, not just for us, but for all of those around us. Oh my God. We get to love ourselves. Are you kidding? And I think that aligns so beautifully with um, the spiritual strength card, because that comes back to 
aligning yourself with what you choose your beliefs to be we are our choices and we are our our belief system right and so not only can you unsubscribe to beliefs that no longer serve you like i really like had to actively unsubscribe to the belief that like relationships are hard and they're work because not to go on like a whole like tangent but like i feel like that was just such a like societal um Thing that like really wanted to just like deconstruct the idea of divorce like they wanted to protect that from happening so they'd be like no you have to you know stick through relationships even if they're hard like no if you don't want to be with a person just leave so I feel like to say that I don't choose to believe that like relationships are like difficult they take work of course but like if you love a person it should be easy and I think that on the converse side I can also choose the beliefs that I root myself in and so if I believe that um, that every person is a mirror. I am no longer a slave to fighting and being combative because I realize they're just mirroring something to me that I'm not looking at within. And if I choose to believe that everything is happening for me, then there's not a single um, lesson I can't learn from every experience. So I say all that to say, um, you can just always choose to see the love in every experience and let that be your feedback, you know? Ooh. Yeah. My God. I mean, and I just, this, con this free card reading on Friday, when you said yes, I was like, people aren't ready for it because I, I already I'm, knew I what was going to happen. Cause I know how wise you are and how inspiring you. you are, but like, whoa, you. whoa, whoa. So like just you. quickly for this full moon, what yeah. are like, just like one or two things that we should definitely be like asking ourselves. I love your journaling prompts. And then oh, how can yes. people connect with you? And yes, yes, all those good things. Yes, I'm always sharing journaling prompts. I think journaling is the most beautiful way to really work through your subconscious. So I'm sharing those on La La Luna TV on my other page if you want to see that. But otherwise, I think working alongside this Venus retrograde, Pluto conjunct, this last full moon of the year, and this eclipse season kind of coming to an end. Um, <laughs> so just like everything. So everything that could possibly be happening at once, I think the like, Can you add one more thing? <laughs> oh, and just like the sun rising every single day, because the fact that we even have to just keep going is so insane. Um, to honor rest and hibernation right now, honor being in a state of review and reflection rather than action. Um, gift yourself um, being in a state that is seasonal, just like the trees and like the earth that we are bred from. Like let yourself be in a state of rest before you go back into action and vice versa. But ultimately, I think, like I've said a trillion times, like there is nothing that is more important to look at right now than our sense of self-worth because everything that we experience professionally, relationally, um, in every single way is derivative of what we believe about ourselves. So look at, you know, not on a conscious level, but like on a subconscious level, what are you telling yourself every day about what you deserve, about what other people have um, in relationship to what you have? Do you think that there's something too large um that your worth is just not big enough for and how can you change that narrative um and ultimately just know that like whatever is being removed from your experience right now whatever knows you are experiencing are happening for you and it's all for your evolution so um work alongside it and just the safety and playing it safe is not worth the bravery in choosing your highest potential so yeah wow i mean and we have one question i'm going to get yeah. to right here is, is is setting a boundary with some considered action. So two things that I've learned with my boundaries coach. One is that boundaries without consequences are just suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where we get to Oof. really be in the action of what is the consequence to those boundaries. And those boundaries don't, those consequences don't have to look harsh. They don't have to look mean. They just have to be some type of consequence to when perhaps somebody is not respecting your boundaries. Because I really, you know, and also the other thing too is that boundaries really where I always thought it was so interesting for myself. Like I was like, why does everybody else have an easier time? Like Chris has a way easier time setting boundaries than I do. And I was like, why is it? And he would even say like, you know, it's like really hard for you. And I, and I kind of beat myself up because I'm like, this should be easy. This should just be easy to say no. And what I realized is that boundaries form from trauma. So that's where we get to be really loving with ourselves, really loving. Okay. Anything you want to speak into for that? Oh, I just, I want to validate everything that you're saying. I think that boundaries are a reflection of how much worth you see within yourself. And anyone that pushes back on a boundary um, is benefiting from you not having boundaries. So it's important. To exactly. Yeah. Jess, if you're on here, like, we love you. Promenade counseling. <laughs> That's like, I like, love her so much. I love her. Um, and then we have Guided by Shannon. Chiron going direct on Sunday will help us see the space we've made from healing our wounds over the last month. Yes? yes. I have no idea. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Absolutely. Girl, we're bringing up Chiron now. Yeah. Just in short, <laughs> the 
wounded healer and it really shows us um the ways in which we can not only um not only where we have like those limiting beliefs but how we can turn those limiting beliefs to be part of our superpower right so if you've experienced a form of trauma how can healing and and, and learning through that trauma be the way in which you use a tool to be someone who someone else leans on or a tool for mm. how to show up in the world <laughs> of the collective so letting your your superpower your wound the wound is the way um, yes. And then we tell her house of light. Stop it. Tank and I had a conversation yesterday. Tank is her son. Who's like so intuitive. He's like the next yeah. teacher of why it's important for trees to release their leaves and rest. Oh my yep. God. You're the only mammals that push through every single season. There are so many like just mammals that honor the fact that like, this is my rest period. This is my action period. And so it, it's important that we gift that to ourselves. So like do less, eat more, sleep longer. Like now is the time to come back to rest yeah. yeah yeah i mean um and we have yeah i mean kinkles i mean that was that was that was it it's about like you're yeah. setting that place from love so that you can yeah. really truly create more space for what it is that is even a higher energy exchange for you and your partner you know yeah. like that's the thing it's like it's not they're they're not they you know if they're benefiting and you're not it's still not equal energy exchange and so that's where you get to hold space to rise it and elevate it yeah yeah, I mean, also Venus retrograde on Saturday. Yeah, we've talked so much about Venus oh, and retrograde. Yes. Yeah, with, yeah, yeah. And then with the charts, yeah, it's a big weekend. Hi, Manifest House. Well, Hi. Jasmine, so how can people connect with you? What I do you offer you. before so, we bounce out of here? Yeah. I, first of all, I'm going to text you because I need you to do Reiki on me. Like, I need some. Love. We got this. We got this. So I'm going to yes. play for you. Um, thank you so, so, so much for having me. Thank you, everyone, for watching. It means the absolute world. Um, you can. Follow me on Instagram at Jasmine Kyleen and everything um, is in my bio as far as my content or if you want to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and otherwise, if you want to get a shirt because I'm intuitive. Want, no, I make shirts and Jess is wearing one and that makes me so emotional. I love these shirts. I love these shirts. That that means, so I know you're always rocking them. I'm like, babe, yes, there's hoodies now too. I will get you one for sure, Jess. But otherwise, yeah, thank you all for joining. It means the absolute world. I love you. And please also you. to like follow you also like I mean you have such a beautiful space on YouTube. Yeah. So like oh, please connect with you. And I know I'm Joe is like really he's like pushing me to get on YouTube. He's like, just talk to Jasmine. <laughs> I'm like, I know. Honey, we will have it. a meeting. We will have a meeting. Yes. 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 We will have a meeting. And I think oh. we need a workshop. There's something here for us to just discover and explore. Oh. So um yeah. Perfect. Thank you for everybody that stayed on. Thank yes, you for thank being you, here. Guys. Um, thank you everybody. I'm going to, I like to always give shout outs to everybody here. So we're going to say happy full moon to Abby, to Gypsy Child Naturals, to Raquel Dancing Feather Healing, Joelle, Yogi Lindsay, Rev J, guided by Shannon, Teller House of Light, Mrs. Poole, Divinely Anna, Manifest House, my mom, Renee, oh. Earth Angel, Liz, Amy, Snowy Moss, Sharon Shaw, Kristen, oh. Jill, Carly, Regina, Stephanie, Lynn, Alicia, um, uh, at dance crazy i love that by the way uh alex and or aj and deborah so i mean wow we had it and then we had kl artwork just come we were talking oh, about you and our deck we love you kelsey so um what an amazing group thank you i'm gonna yeah. definitely make sure to get off of this save this live yes. so that people can check the work play. i mean i'm gonna just go back myself to this Same. i have to there's so much you said <laughs> that i have to journal but i love I you guys happy full moon move through all the emotions it's all happening for you <laughs> all right we love you love you guys bye thank you jasmine